Hello and welcome to this next part in the E2 tutorial and this video shouldn't be very long but it covers a very interesting very important topic and Yi calls that migration you might also call it database version control now I'm not sure whether you've deployed any live systems before and how you've done it but the chances are that you have developed the database like this directly on the production server and then when your site is ready you've uploaded the code to the server and then the site works and that's all fine but what happens when you have another developer and that developer wants to add a new table to the database clearly if they add the table and they check in code to use the table then there's a chance that at some point when you update your source code that something's going to fall over because your copy of the database doesn't match their copy of the database. There's also another issue in that as you make changes over time, so over weeks and months and years that you're maintaining a system, you add more and more items, you edit tables, you insert default items into tables, whatever it is that you might be doing, Again, you want to be able to track those changes like you can in source code so that, I don't know if I can do this here, if I look in Git um, and I show the history. So in this case, this file only has one um, item in the history because uh, I haven't changed it since then. But if I look at some of the controllers, like the site controller, and I show the history of that, then again, it can tell me what I did, what I changed. Um, all of the commits um, and all kinds of stuff like that. In this case, it even tracks changes that I made locally every time I saved it, which is quite interesting. But the important thing here is if something goes wrong, I can very easily go back to where the change was made and I might be able to work out why the change was made. I can certainly work out who changed it and, and I might then be able to go and ask them why they changed the file in that way and you know if, if a bug is caused in your code then the history of the version control is really quite essential to doing that. So the question is how do we do that for the database? How do we keep version control of something that doesn't really exist as individual files in the same way as source code? And the answer is, funnily enough, to make some files that reflect the changes that we want to make in the database. And that's where migrations come in. So if we open one of these migrations, um, effectively it's code, it's PHP, and it extends this class migration. And in this case, this one is the users table. Now, this is the migration that actually comes with the advanced template because it creates the user table in the database. So your basic template doesn't normally have users in the database, it has them in a file. If you have been following these tutorials, however, you will have copied this migration file in to your project and you might have already run it as well. And if you look, you can work out kind of what's going on here. In this case, there's a special um, command for setting up MySQL tables. And in this case, we create a table. And inside the table, we create columns with types. We can add on things like not null, uh, sizes of strings. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that you can use in here. And in actual fact, in E2, the, um, the functions that are available inside the migration class um, are much more advanced than this. So in the newer ones, there aren't quite so many pieces of text. But you kind of get the idea of what's going on. You can create tables, you can create more than one table, you can create foreign keys. So if I do dollar this arrow, uh, you can see here, create index, create table. Um, I don't know, uh, add foreign key. So add foreign key again, um, you've got the name of the foreign key, the table it's going to be applied to. So if you're adding one to user, you could create one called, you know, for, um, foreign key, users, you know, whatever, books, something like that. Uh, we would apply it to our user table. So we can just copy that from there. We would then say, what column is that going to um, be uh, be linked to in our users table so in this case we haven't got a books one because we've used that junction table but let's just say we had a book ID column or something like that um, that actually should be like that 
because it's a column and not a table. Um, and the same kind of thing here. What table is it pointing to? We could say, well, it's pointing to the book table. And in the book table, that is going to be the uh, ID column. So just a foreign key, very simple, add it in there. Um, usually we'll do that, we'll add, you know, we could add, like I say, one table, several tables, tables with foreign keys. Remember that you'll need to create them in the correct order because if one of these tables doesn't exist and you try and run some code that adds a foreign key, obviously that's going to fail. So that's one important thing. And the other thing that's quite, um, or you might be interested in, but it depends on your database schema, is as well as using up and down, so up is what happens when you run the migration, so this is generally gonna add things, but of course an upgrade could remove a table or could remove a column from a table or change a type or something. And down is what happens if you revert the migration. So if you run the migration and something breaks, you might need to migrate down again and um, fix that issue. So generally speaking, this has to do the opposite of this. So if I've added the foreign key, then uh, probably, I can't remember if you have to do this, I think you have to drop um, the foreign key first. Um, and again, you just copy that from there, put those in there, and that would work, um, work in there, so that's easy enough. And then we drop the table. So that works very well, it's very easy to use. One of the things that you might be wondering about is, you know, what happens if I'm creating, say, two or three tables and the first one falls over for some reason, or maybe the first one gets created, but the second one falls over, then am I gonna be left with a broken database? And the answer is possibly yes. So one of the options that you have is instead of using up and down, you're allowed to use safe up and safe down. And what these do, these automatically run these, um, these database schema changes inside a transaction. And they'll do that automatically. So automatically it will create a transaction, do all of these things, create the table, add the foreign key. And only if it gets to the end of this function, will it commit the transaction. And if any of those fail, the transaction will be rolled back. So that's a kind of a safety mechanism that says if you need it, all of it to work, um, then you know, generally speaking, it's fine to do safe up. The one issue, and you've got to be really careful on this, is that there are certain things that are um, implicit commits. And what that means is in MySQL particularly, if you create a new table, it will happen straight away, even if it's inside a transaction. If you drop a table, it will happen straight away, even within a transaction. Uh, and that might catch you out because you might drop a table here and then something else falls over. The transaction gets rolled back, but you've already dropped the table and then you, you might not be able to get it back. So just be aware of that. There is, um, you can find stuff on here if you search for MySQL implicit commit. I'm sure that will be the first result. Statements that cause implicit commit uh, and all kinds of things. The alter table, create index, drop index, drop table, rename table, uh, and all kinds of stuff down there. And that is a classic MySQL, very difficult to read help file. So there you go. So the migration itself is fairly straightforward. How does it actually work? Well, let's just take out my modifications on here because I don't want to break that. So what happens is if you want to create some new tables, now what you might have noticed is I've been very naughty. So these RBAC tables, um, which are the auth item, auth uh, item child, all those ones, um, those four, were created by that migration. And the user table was created by that migration. And the migration table was created by the migration tool itself. But book user link, book and author were created by me manually in the database. And that's very naughty. So what I might decide to do is create myself a migration so that if anybody else takes this project and needs to create that database, they can do so just by running the migration tool. So how does it work? It's dead easy. You go into the roots of your YI application. So in this case, that's where ye, the YI PHP file is and YI.bat, which runs the PHP version of YI. 
um, on Windows it does at least anyway. So in here all we do is we type ye and then we do migrate and if you want to create a new one we say create and we give it a name and this name should reflect what it is that we're trying to do. So it's kind of up to us how we group these. We could put them all in one migration. Um, it's kind of up to you if you want to do that. But again, like I say, there's there's a few dangers of putting too much in one migration. There's more of a chance that it will fail. So let's just call the first one um, book. And it will say, do you want to create a new migration? And I say, yes. And what you'll notice here is it's created one. What's important to notice is that it has a date string in it and that's how the migration tool works out what order to run these in and then the name that I gave it which is book is on the end of it and so in here all I'm going to do I'm just going to cheat by copying a bit of this uh, dump it in here um, do that uh, at the end of it I'm going to do end of array end of bracket and that and then the other thing I'm going to do oh, is I need to put the table options in there. Like I say, it's some funny, oh, copy, put that in there. And the table options is just this bit. Um, where are we going? Control V. And uh, I don't want auth manager item table. The table I'm going to create is going to be called book. Now, obviously, I've already um, created this table. So I'm not going to be able to run this uh, this migration, but I'll show you how it works anyway. Um, but if I want to make this available to another um, developer, I would go to this table, look at the structure, and then effectively I would need to copy this structure. Now I could have done this in the migrate tool and saved myself all of this hassle, but um, I didn't. So there you go. So we go in here, control spacebar gives you the auto prompt. I say I want an integer. Um, I don't need a length because it's not a string. And this is not null, but it's also, in fact, I think there's an, uh, an identity one. Um, hang on a sec, let me, uh, just gonna look at one of my other projects a second and see, uh, where am I? Do, do, do. Sorry about this, this is all very, very amateur. Just look at one of my mi migrations in another, um, another thing so yeah so rather than schema blah 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 the new style is we can do dollar this arrow primary key at least I hope we can uh, hang on a sec I'll work out why this doesn't work um, EDB migration da 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 table options yep that well, should work I'm not quite sure why it hasn't found that um, and let, um, what is this migration? DB up, down. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why this migration is a bit different than the one I've got on this other site. Um, it uses the same class, uses DB migration. Um, so, well, let's let's just. We'll have to run with this for now and work out um, work out what's going on. But um, we do this, and again, we'd have to copy all of these um, all of these things in here. Let's just kind of shortcut that for a second. Let's just because um, I'm not I'm not going to be able to run this anyway for now because, like I say, I've already created the table. So let's just say we're going to have a table with one column called type, which is integer, and it's not null or you know or something like that. Um, and then on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dollar this drop table and the table again is going to be this. And remember what we said in the other video that the curly brackets will make sure that um, the table name is quoted correctly because different um, different databases quote tables in different ways. And the percent sign means that if you have a table prefix set up in your config, that that will automatically be applied as well. So we have an up, we have a down, that all works fine. So if we then did that, um, and you know, again, we could have several of these in a big row, um, several different ones. Then all we have to do in order to actually run that is we go just back to here and just call ye migrate and that will say da, 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 do you want to apply it 
Now, like I say, in this case, I already have a book table, so if I try and run this, it's gonna go bang anyway. So, but if I say yes, all that happens is it will attempt to run it directly on the database. It will find the database connection string automatically and all the rest of it. And it will obviously apply the SQL that you've applied. And then what it will do is it will update this migration table, which is there. And if you look, it will tell you what it what migrations it's actually run and when it's run those so that's how my um, migrate keeps track of what it is to um, it needs to do so if i just go no for a second if i go and delete this one here it's just a file so i can delete that fine so if i go back and now do it it will say there's no new migration found how does it know that because it can see these two migrations in here it's looked in the database and says, no, I've already applied those. I don't need to do anything. So it's quite clever. The other thing we can do, uh, I think the syntax is that. Uh, no, can't remember exactly how we revert it, but I'll if I do that. Um, uh, sorry, I can't remember what the, the, the thing is. Um, there is a command to migrate, uh, to revert the, um, revert the migration. Migration revert again, very amateur of me. Do -do -do -do. Down, there you go. It's not revert, it's down. So you do migrate down, and it says um, total, one, um, total one migration to be reverted. It'll only do one at a time unless you tell it to do more. Uh, so, do you want to do that? And again, you get to say yes or no. And again, I'm not going to revert that one because I need it. So there you go, migrations. The, the beauty of the migration is that what you end up with is a file on the disk that you can check into your source control. And what's important with anything like database changes is that if you make a change, so get let's suppose one day I'm modifying the book table and I add a column um, into the structure, and I add a new column in here, then um, I should do it using a migration, and I should check in that migration at minimum once a day but preferably more often than that and any other developers working on the same project should be synchronizing um, their code get latest version whatever whatever it is that you're using and then running those migrations on a daily basis and what that means is you're less likely to have two people changing the same table at the same time now the thing with migrations is that it's not necessarily a bad thing um, if somebody adds one column and you add another column, clearly both those changes can take place independently. Um, although I'm not actually sure what happens if you create a migration and then you pull in someone else's migration that's older than yours and then you try the migrate tool. I don't think that the migrate tool will pick up on the older migration so again it's good to get into a habit of doing that regularly but the good thing is like i say you can then look at the history who created that um you know why did they do it what were they doing it for i've got all of that history encapsulated and then another um feature that's very helpful is when you're then deploying this to a, a live server to a, to a um, production server what you can do is you can deploy the code and then you can run something like a grunt script or, or whatever it is that you want to run which can actually run the ye migrate tool bearing in mind it's all contained in the code so that you don't need any other executable it just uses the ye um, you can run that on the production server and on the production server it can then run all of those migrations and it will work in exactly the same way if you update the, the live site and it just contains one migration then when you call migrate it will only apply the one migration so it's also a very good way of deploying things to the server without having to connect to the server like this and try and you know import and you know sql stuff and all that kind of thing i mean backing up and restoring in my sql is quite a, an awkward process usually it involves writing a big text file with lots and lots and lots of sql in it and then importing it and you, and you can do that on these um via php my admin but again it can be very slow it only supports a maximum upload size so if your database is big then that's not going to work anyway um, and even with schema changes you don't want to be clicking through and manually creating tables you might make mistakes you might get it wrong you might then be testing something different on your local box 
than on your production box. So the good thing about having the migrations is everybody's singing from the same hymn sheet. If it's broken for one person, it's going to be broken for everybody else. So there you go with migrations. Like I said, it's not a difficult topic and not a long video. Any questions or comments, please add them to the bottom um, of the video. And just a quick apology. Um, on the last video, I was hacking around my code quite a lot. Um, and I uploaded it all to Git accidentally without checking all of the changes. So um, apologies if you've downloaded the code and something doesn't work properly. Um, it's probably just because I've been playing around a bit. So I'll try and tidy it up before um, and, and upload any changes again. And then hopefully uh, you'll have something that works a bit more like it should. Okay, thanks very much.